In the past, we have explored tales of strange and bizarre creatures, but whilst often enigmatic in nature, few have been quite as malevolent and haunting as the entity we will encounter this week. An African legend in possession of supernatural capabilities, which it utilizes to carry out a truly evil agenda. Join us as we examine the Tokolosh. Making his way up the communal staircase, quietly cursing the fact that the building's only lift was out of action, the detective paused to rest for a moment. Having arrived at a point in his career where his retirement was now in sight, he had done precious little in recent years in the way of physical exercise. Now trying to catch his breath in the dimly lit stairwell, he could almost hear his wife's voice in his head bemoaning his lack of motivation to stay in shape. With a frustrated groan, he pushed the imaginary griping to one side and continued his ascent, arriving at the 13th floor a short time later. There then followed a brief discussion with the patrol officer who was guarding the apartment in question before he entered. The body of the dead woman was lying on her bed, along with various pieces of equipment the paramedics had used to try and save her. He paused for a moment, searching for and failing to find anything that might suggest a cause of death, before moving on to speak with the crime scene examiner. An old acquaintance, the forensics officer in question was in the midst of taking photographs of whatever he deemed relevant to the investigation. Greeting the detective, he then conducted a walkthrough of the scene before returning to the bedroom where the incident had allegedly begun. The dead woman's husband had made a statement, saying he had awoken earlier that evening to find his wife lying unresponsive next to him. He had tried to revive her, but was unsuccessful, and just as he was about to step off the bed to go and call an ambulance he saw something strange. There, in the corner of the room, he perceived the outline of something attempting to conceal itself. A small figure, whose eyes glistened a deep red when caught in the low light emanating from the dim bedside lamp. Its childlike frame seemed to be covered from head to toe in a layer of dark fur making it almost indistinguishable from the shadow it was attempting to hide within. From here, the crime scene examiner walked the detective out of the bedroom and into the living room, showing him the items of furniture pushed to one side by the husband as he had then pursued the small creature through their apartment. This short tour culminated with the presentation of three fresh bullet holes, which had been shot by the resident into the wall of his abode using a handgun. All three rounds he had fired impacted less than two feet above the floorboards of the room. With a sigh, the detective finished taking down his notes, shaking his head wearily, before underlining the last word he had written on the pad in his hand. Tokolosh. The first foreigners to learn the legend of the Tokolosh were the Dutch traders and merchants who settled South Africa during the mid-17th century. In discussions with one another at various meetings and social gatherings, it became clear that a strange tradition had been identified amongst the indigenous population. 
Local women who had been taken on by the settlers as nannies and housekeepers were found to have inexplicably raised their beds several feet off the floor. These actions were usually completed without the approval or knowledge of their employers, using whatever items came to hand to elevate their bedsteads well clear of the floorboards below. Various inquiries amongst the community eventually revealed that the women were taking this precaution because they believed that if they didn't, they could well die in their sleep. There had been numerous instances amongst local families in which children and young women had mysteriously passed away, whilst others living under the same roof had survived. And the reason for these unexplained deaths had been attributed to the presence of a tiny demon, known in Glossa teachings as the Tokolosh. It was believed that these entities were used by individuals to carry out acts of maliciousness and revenge against those who were perceived to have wronged them. When paid for the service, a witch doctor would locate a recently buried corpse and pierce its eyes with hot metal, pouring a mystical powder into the newly created apertures. A sacred chant would then substantially shrink the cadaver before this miniature corpse would reanimate itself as a tokolosh. Described as a small biped, almost rat-like in appearance, this tiny monster possessed razor-like claws and pincer-like teeth. It was also believed to have the ability to render itself completely invisible to human eyes, either by drinking water or swallowing a small pebble. The demon would then access the home of those identified by its master via an insecure portal, taking up temporary residence there before going on to carry out acts of malice. Having located its target, the demon would scratch them with its sharp claws as they slept, resulting in deep welts and sores which would become infected and cause severe discomfort. It would also whisper into the ears of its victims persuading them to lose interest in their sexual partners or to commit acts of violence and murder against other people, including their own family members. But there was a great price to pay for the services of the Tokolosh. The demon itself would demand the soul of a loved one from the one who summoned it, to be taken at a time and place of its choosing. The only way to ensure safety from a tokolosh was for the victims to raise their sleeping mats above the floor, to at least waist height. This made it impossible for the creature to harm them, as it did not possess the ability to raise itself upwards from the ground. It was also possible to evict a suspected tokolosh by enlisting the help of a holy man, who possessed the ability to see and then banish the demon from any affected property. The main factor which seems to set the Tokolosh aside from similar tours and myths, such as the Mamlambo and Lightning Bird, is its apparent longevity. Even in modern times, doctors and social workers continue to be approached by members of their communities who claim to have seen or been influenced by these demons. The Tokolosh has been repeatedly cited in legal proceedings as being responsible for cases of misery and tragedy, such as divorce and murder. In the 1950s, a series of brutal killings took place in one isolated rural community situated in South Africa's Northern Veldt region. Many of the slayings had taken place during broad daylight, with no witnesses as to who or what the attacker may have been. It was only several weeks into the police investigation that a local man, who had been reported missing from his own community many weeks before, was finally detained. When interviewed, the suspect fully admitted to murdering the victims, but stated in his defense that he had not been in control of his own actions at the time of the killings. The murderer told the authorities that immediately prior to going missing, he noticed his wife acting strangely towards him. She had gradually become cold and distant, refusing to allow him to touch her and demanding that he sleep in a separate bed. 
suspecting that she may be having an affair. He pretended to leave for an overnight trip to a nearby village, only to then sneak back into their home later that same evening. Having done so, he found his wife in bed with a small figure lying next to her, apparently talking to her while she slept. Amidst her slumber, she was smiling and giggling, seeming to enjoy whatever the creature was whispering into her ear. In a fit of blind rage, the husband seized a kitchen knife and repeatedly stabbed his sleeping wife to death. In the act of doing so, he had ignored the small creature itself, which then managed to grab hold of his arm and perch itself upon his shoulders. The man immediately lost control of his own body, and over the coming weeks, having fled his village, he stated that he had been under the control of the demon. He said that it remained seated upon him, completely invisible to others, deciding when he ate and slept and forcing him to kill many of those he encountered. During the late 1990s, a priest living in the Zimbabwean city of Bulawayo was approached by a wealthy local resident who pleaded for his assistance. The homeowner stated that she believed her housemaid detested her and was employing supernatural powers to try and kill her in her sleep. When the priest asked the woman why she believed this, she went on to show him a series of deep cuts and slashes, which she had sustained to her arms and lower back. She told him that these had been inflicted upon her by an invisible assailant while she was asleep. Furthermore, she had witnessed small items and trinkets being moved around her house by this same unseen entity, but only ever during the hours of darkness promising that he would assist in any way he could, the priest agreed to call at the woman's house the following evening, gaining access with a key she had provided. Upon entering the residence, he had been cautiously moving from room to room when he was startled by an audible scurrying noise behind him. Turning quickly, the holy man managed to make out a roughly two-foot-tall silhouette dashing behind a piece of furniture in an effort to escape detection. Acting quickly, he cast the obstruction aside to find a short, red-eyed furry creature staring back at him. Seeming to recognize his religious attire, the creature hissed angrily bearing a set of sharp teeth and then lashed out with its clawed hands. Suspecting he knew the identity of the assailant, the priest produced his crucifix and spoke a series of prayers, sending the creature scurrying out the front door and into the night. Days later, he was then contacted by the homeowner who thanked him for his services. She also informed him that shortly after his attendance, her housekeeper had fallen gravely ill and died mysteriously only a few days later. During the summer of 2016, authorities in the Zimbabwean region of Matabilaland had been forced to respond to numerous reports of missing children. Many of those who had disappeared were never found again, but one young girl from the town of Inyati did reappear. Almost a week since she had last been seen, the 13-year-old had walked back into her settlement, delirious and malnourished. After being given time to recover, when she was later spoken to by police, she stated that she had been kidnapped by the inhabitants of a neighboring village. They had taken her to a large residence with an upper attic space, where she was detained and kept tied up. In addition to the six people who lived in the house, she had also seen four small monsters that would occasionally sit on the shoulders of the inhabitants. These furry creatures would whisper into the ears of the residents, ordering them to carry out foul and unnatural acts. It was under the direction of these demons that the six people from the address kidnapped and killed the children of surrounding settlements, sometimes engaging in acts of cannibalism. 
The creatures would consume the flesh of the dead and compel those under their control to do so as well. Unfortunately for the police, others from her town who were present also listened to the girl's story, and an angry mob was soon formed. Before the officers could stop them, this gang had made its own way to the property in question and set fire to the building, killing those who lived there and removing any possibility of confirming the missing girl's version of events. Whatever the truth behind the stories of the Tokolosh, it is a legend that continues to cause significant harm to the people of the nations situated in southern Africa. It has been used as an apparent justification in instances of rape and murder, as well as other equally sinister acts. In 2018, a four-year-old boy disappeared from the town of Essigodini, taken from a nearby river whilst his mother was washing their clothes. An investigation by the local authorities failed to locate the child, but numerous witnesses claimed that the people who had removed him from his mother were local witches. Some believed they had done this to save him from a tokolosh who had taken hold of him, whilst others claimed he was abducted with the intention of turning him into a demon. Ultimately, he was never found, and his disappearance highlighted the ongoing prevalence of the legend. Many observers claim that it's tragedies such as this one that give rise to the legend in the first place, and that there is a far more scientific reason for the unexplained sleep deaths. They point to the fact that many African families traditionally slept on the floor of their rondavals, lying in a circle around a wood-burning fire. During the night, this fire would deplete the oxygen levels within the dwelling, replacing them with poisonous carbon monoxide. This would cause death within the residence, usually affecting anyone who suffered from existing poor health or undiagnosed medical conditions. Ignorant of the science behind this, the legend of the Tokolosh then took hold, going on to be adopted as a wider justification for acts of crime and violence towards others. There has never been any physical evidence to validate the existence of such a creature, despite the many encounters it is alleged to have been involved in. And whilst this may be the result of its strong supernatural powers, it may also illustrate how this alleged monster may be little more than the darkness that dwells within each of us. A psychological manifestation of the inherent evil we are all capable of.
I'm afraid I can't do the killing for you. Who is that? I've been to her house. Her bed is too high. Are you fucking serious right now? You're supposed to be a badass supernatural killer. Can't you climb? No. I don't like heights. Get out. Bad time story.